Heavenly greetings in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, the Lord be with your spirit. Thank you so much for joining me here in the beauty of God's creation for a divine lecture. And what makes it divine? Because every word of God is spirit and life. And the life of God is divine life to bring transformation to the situation you're going through. Do you believe that the word of God is spirit and life? Do you believe that the word of God is alive? In that case, this is our Bible. This is the word of God but we cannot apply it to our heart without the Holy Spirit. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, we give this time to you. We know people are so busy. Lord Jesus, give us the strength to have a hearing heart in Jesus' name. Amen. So I have a question for you today. What situation are you going through? Are you experiencing hard times? Does life seem difficult for you? Have you been mistreated? maybe betrayed by those you love the most? Do you feel you've fallen down? Do you feel like you've made a decision you regret and you want to relive a part of your life? Do you feel like you're frustrated, you're burdened, you're weighed down? Maybe you're plagued by negative thoughts. Do you feel like giving up? Do you feel like you're cheated, you're disappointed, you're frustrated? Do you feel like there's no hope left for you in life? Do you feel tired, fatigued? Well, let me ask you another question. Do you feel like today you're on your knees? If all the situations has brought you to your knees before God, before your creator, then that's the best place you can be. No matter what took you to this position, no matter what made you feel like you can't do it anymore by yourself, is when you realize that you can't rely on men that you begin to seek God. If you're on your knees before God, it's the best place to be. Do you know that the psalmist said in Psalm 119 verse 71, it was good that I was afflicted so that I could learn your statutes. What are the statutes of God? His way. And that is what it's about as believers, for us to learn the way of God. And you, it's impossible for you and I to learn the way of God without obeying the word of God in the midst of challenges, in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of hard times. Because this is not heaven. There'll be things poking us, disturbing us, annoying us, frustrating us. How you handle your hard times will single you out from the crowd. And that is what will determine your future, your destiny. Yes. There's nobody without weakness. There's nobody without a thorn in their flesh. We're not in heaven. Yes, we're not in heaven. That means that there's nobody without weakness. What weakness are you suffering from? Which area of your life do you wish was not there? Which area of your life do you think if it wasn't there, then you'd live a smoother life, a happier life, a more contented life? Maybe you could serve God more, more productively, more effectively. Well, let me tell you today that maybe what you're running from can be the very thing that will bring strength to your life. Yes, it's all about how we look at it. And that is why today, if you realize the best place to be is on your knees before God, you'll see the value in your trial. I want this message today to speak to your heart about the value of your trial, the value of your hard times. Because if you look back at your life, I know if I look back at mine, my journey of life, I know that in those hard times was when I learned the most and when I sought God's presence the most. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 53 from verse 2, you can read it. It says that God looks down on the sons of men to see if anyone seeks him, to see if anyone understands his ways. What is he looking for? He's looking for your heart. It's not that you have to be physically on your knees, but your heart has to be submitted to God. That's what it means to be on your knees before God. And truly, it's the best place to be. Let's open our Bible to the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11. This is the chapter all about faith. When you have time, read the whole chapter, but we're going to take it just from verse 32. And what more shall I say? I do not have time to tell about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, and gained what was promised, who shut the mouths of the lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword, whose weakness was turned to strength, 
and who became powerful in battle and routed foreign armies. You see, when Apostle Paul was recounting the story of heroes of faith in the Bible, he mentioned one thing that singled them out. He said their weakness was turned to strength. You see, none of those heroes of faith were without weakness. In the same way that you and me are without weakness, because broken things become useful in God's hands. If you think that you can't work for God, if you think that you can't become a prayer warrior, if you think that you can't be used by God because of your weakness, let me tell you today, it's not your weakness that matters to God, it's your willingness to get out of it. Look at Gideon. He's mentioned in the heroes of faith in the Bible. He was the weakest in his clan and his clan was the least in the whole of Israel. Yet God looked at him and saw in him a mighty warrior. What about David? We all know David was an uninvited shepherd boy whose parents didn't even think he was worthy to present to the prophet Samuel. Yet God saw in him a mighty king, a man after his own heart. What about prophet Samuel himself? He was only a small boy when he received the call of God. He didn't even know what the voice of the Lord sounded like. He, he was confused. Yet God saw in him a great prophet who would anoint kings and judge kingdoms. What's your weakness today? You see, to laugh is not a weakness, but when you laugh too much, it can become a weakness. To talk is not a weakness, but when you talk too much, it becomes a weakness. <laughs> what is it that is dragging you down that you keep coming to God to say, God, I don't want to do this again? Is it jealousy? Is it envy? Is it anger? Is it love of money? Is it lust? What is it disturbing your heart today? I want to tell you that with God, your weakness can be turned to strength. And that is the secret of believers. That is what Apostle Paul said there when he recounted the heroes of faith. He said, whose weakness was turned to strength. This should encourage us today. That God is not looking for perfect people. He's not looking for people whose lives are sorted out. He's looking for people who know the value of God. You see, that's why Jesus came. It was the revelation of Jesus that told us that there's strength in weakness when God is involved. It was the revelation of Jesus that told us that blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That means that blessing lies in knowing your need for God, in knowing you can't do it by yourself. Are you tired of being a victim in life? Are you tired of recounting stories of those who failed you in the past? Come, let's go on a journey. I want you to see your life as God sees you. This message is so important because if you don't learn to see the value of your trial, you will keep relearning and reliving the same mistakes and having to learn the lesson again and again and again. I believe if you look at your life, you've gone through enough hard times. If you handle them correctly, you'd be in a different position by now. You'd be promoted by now. But sometimes because we handle our hard times carelessly, they don't become good times. But if you handle your hard times with care, they can turn to good times. You see, I want to tell you today, stop seeing yourself as a victim of your circumstance. Even if you feel like what you're going through is not your fault at all. Well, do you know that in the practice of our faith, we should be expected to face some pain? Yes. Why? Because this world is not perfect. And if we truly believe in our values, if we're not willing to pay any price for them, we should ask ourselves if we even believe in them at all. You see, it's when you're struggling between faith and doubt in your heart, between the storm and the peace in your heart, that the peace of God becomes so valuable to you. That's why King David said, and the psalmist said in Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear because you are with me. He walked through the valley. It's not for you to stay in the valley and wallow in self-pity. You have to walk through the valley with God. Because in the midst of your trial, that's when God can get you to the place when he can use you, when he can speak to your heart. He's trying to knock on the door of your heart, but many times because of pride, because of comfort, we don't pay attention to his voice. Today, I want you to see the value of your trial. Maybe what you're going through is a direct result of your mistake, your bad decision in life. Well, I want to tell you that the good news is that we serve a God in Romans 8 verse 28, who can turn everything around for your good, for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. 
God walks and works through the circumstances of life. I don't know what circumstance you're facing today, but I want to tell you it's time for you to see the value in that trial. Because if you keep trying to avoid trials and difficulties, you keep facing them. Once you get through one, there'll be another and another and another. Because God wants to promote you in your spiritual life. This is how we grow in our spiritual life. When we obey the word of God in the midst of trial, in the midst of temptation, in the midst of pain. So on this journey to try and rethink how you see your trials and hard times, let's look at Apostle Paul. He's the perfect example of this. And I can identify with him. I think we all can because he thought that that thorn in his flesh was disturbing him from serving God. He thought that if that thorn was removed, he would be more effective in his work as an apostle. He thought, if I could just get that thorn out of my life, then I can serve God better. Which area of your life do you think if it wasn't there, you could serve God better? Well, let's see how God answered him. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 12. Let's take it from verse 7. To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Okay, let's take it from there. He knew the reason of that thorn. He knew the reason of the thorn was to keep him from pride because pride is a sin in all of us by nature. And pride is what hardens our heart. Pride is what makes us see ourselves as a victim that we can do anything we want. We justify our actions because we concentrate on the wrong done to us instead of seeing our true position before God. Pride is a sin in us by nature. That means that God's trying to hide us from pride. He loved Apostle Paul so much and he loves you and me so much that he wants to hide pride from us. And do you know what can remove pride? Humility, trials. Sometimes you have to go through the test of humiliation, of difficulty, because that refines us. How does it refine us? Like gold is refined in the fire. All the particles that are not pure, they come to the surface. In the same way, sin easily hides where there's no heat of trial. Because I want to tell you one truth today, the precious purpose of your life can never be fulfilled without the heat of trials. No. It can never be fulfilled without the heat of trials. That is why we need God. Because remember, Satan wants you to keep you from serving God's purpose in your life. He wants your trial to serve his purpose, which is to do what? His purpose is for you to see God in a bad light. His purpose is for you to complain. Did you start your morning with a complaint today or a prayer of thanksgiving? Be honest. Have you complained at all today? Because complaining is the opposite of worshipping. Complaining hurts the heart of God. I want you to stop complaining. This message is for you to see the value in whatever you're going through so you can stop complaining and see reason to praise God. If you're finding it difficult to praise God, write down 10 things that you're thankful for each day. Meditate on them. Thank God for them. Anytime you want to complain, say, God, please give me the strength and the courage to praise you and not complain. I believe if you do that, your life will change. So let's see what he did. Verse eight, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. Does this sound like you and me? That sounds like our prayer life. God, take this away from me. God, remove this from me. God, come into the situation. Sometimes we pray as if we think God does not even know our situation. God's not blind. He's not deaf. He knows what we're going through. But many times he walks through the circumstances of life. He works in our heart. He tests our heart to reward us. What's the reward of your state of heart? That's the key. What is the reward of your state of heart? Are you worried? Are you anxious? Are you angry? Are you bitter? Well, the reward, the reward of that is more of Satan's companions that come into your heart. Because once the door is open to one, they all come in. But what about the reward of your heart when your heart is at peace? Your heart is generous. Your heart is full of the fruit of the Spirit. Then the reward of, is great in heaven. Who knows what would happen if your prayer for a better condition had been answered? 
a better condition for the problem in your life to stop? In this case, a better condition for the thorn to be removed. Who knows what would have happened? Maybe salvation would have been taken from you. So let's see how God answered Paul. He said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. That's the secret there of believers. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Now, it's very easy to say that you can delight in hardship, that you can delight in persecution until it happens to you. <laughs> until you're persecuted, until you're facing hardship, then it becomes difficult. But that's the test of your heart. Remember, God tests our heart to reward us. Allow your trial to bring you to your knees before God. And stop repeating stories of those who failed you in the past. Are you tired of living your life on the level it is? That means that God wants to take you to another level in life. But you have to allow him. You have to allow him to work through you. You have to allow him to work through your weaknesses and turn them to strength. That is the miracle working God that we serve. Do you know, in this past year of my life, I've also gone through many challenges. Even the past, well, ever since I was born, I can recount many different challenges. Blessing also comes with challenges because life is two-sided. But sometimes if I look at my life and I think if I wanted to remove those things that maybe are difficult for me, challenging for me, I would miss out on experiencing the comfort of God, the faithfulness of God, the miracle working power of God. You see, God wants to work strengthen your weakness today. And let me tell you the greatest revelation about this. Your thorn in your life the weakness in your life can make you a prayer warrior. Yes. If you keep going to God so many times a day because of your weakness, God, I don't want to do this again. God, help me, God, please. I don't want to say this again. I don't want to do it again. The amount of times that you're going to God, God, you're so aware of your words that God can use your words to bless others. Yes, God can turn your weakness into strength. That's what it means. What's your weakness? I want to tell you that's an opportunity for God to manifest his strength. Yes, because what we see as a disadvantage is actually an advantage. That is the secret of believers. So what's the value of being on our knees? Well, number one, you know that you can't trust in human power. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians. The book of Ephesians 6 verse 10, it says, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. It's not about our own strength. It's God's strength that manifests in your weakness, in my weakness. What is it you're running away from today? I want you to write it down and ask God for forgiveness and say, God, use this situation to strengthen me, strengthen my spiritual life, strengthen my prayer life. When you become more aggressive in your prayer, I don't mean praying with more, with, with more aggression. No, I mean spiritually having no sympathy for sin. I mean spiritually. The moment doubt enters your heart, remove it. If that negative thought comes into your mind, you let it die unborn. You don't speak it out. If you hear gossip, you walk away from it because it hurts your heart. That's what I mean by being spiritually aggressive because you're sensitive to the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit. And you know the Holy Spirit can only dwell in a place that's holy. And that is the secret mystery of all. That the great God came to the universe in a frail human baby in a manger that was a stable not a glamorous place, not a perfect place. That is the greatest sign of strength in weakness. So stop disqualifying yourself because God doesn't disqualify you. Stop thinking that it's all over. You know, when you think it's all over, God says it's just beginning. Stop thinking I'm too old. I've made too many mistakes in life. I can't start again. It's difficult for me. I've tried. Keep trying, not in your own strength. When you keep trying, keep trying, God will come and rescue you. That's what he did for Peter. When Peter was walking on the water, he was sinking because he took his eyes off God. But God saw his genuine desire to come to him and he reached out and he pulled him up. That's what God wants to do to you today. 
if he sees that you're on your knees, if he sees that your heart is on its knees before him, he will pull you up. He will take you to a higher place. That's the promise in the book of Psalm 66. Do you know that promise? Let's read it together. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. This is verse nine. For you, O oh God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You, ref you brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let men ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us to a place of abundance. You're going to that place of abundance. You're walking through the valley because you're coming out of it. You're not staying in the valley. You're walking through the valley with God. And when you come out, believe me, you'll look back and you'll say, yes, I know why I went through that. That's the value of your trial. You'll write it down and you'll have something, lessons to tell your children, your grandchildren, generations yet unborn. Because if you look at the heroes of faith, what singles them out is how they handled their hard times, how they handled their difficulties, how they handled their, their, their tough situations in life. That's what singles them out from the crowd. So today, stop being a victim. If you find yourself on your knees, it's not a place of weakness, it's a place of strength. But don't let your trial serve Satan's purpose. Remember, Satan's purpose is for you to complain. Satan's purpose is for you to just give up, to think that you can do anything you want because there's no point. God's purpose is for you to be on your knees so you can see the power in accepted sorrow, the power in accepted pain. Because let me tell you, you can be sick in body and yet be a friend of God. That doesn't disqualify you from being a friend of Jesus. Are you ready to be at the feet of Jesus? Stop running away from your trials. Stop running away from your difficulties. Stop complaining about your hardships. Stop thinking that it's not fair. Maybe God wants to make you so strong a strong prayer warrior for him. Don't think that, who am I to be a prayer warrior? I can't, even, I can't even handle my own life. I want to tell you that God can use you to be an intercessor, not just for your own family, for your own country, for your own world. Mm -hmm. Yes, because that is why we're here on this earth. We're, we're walking through, it's a pilgrimage. We're not staying here. This is not our home. Heaven is our home. And we will face difficulties, trials, tribulations. Please don't see them as strange. You're not out of touch. No. Allow that trial to bring you to your knees before God. Because when you're on your knees before God, it's the best place you can ever be. If you feel maybe you've grown too proud, you've grown too hard-hearted, you're ignoring the voice of God, you don't see the need to thank him for every moment of his attention. You don't see the need to thank him for every single thing in your life. Are your parents living? Give them a call and tell them you love them. Are your brothers and sisters alive? Give them a call and tell them you love them. The family of God around you that God has given you, give them a call and tell them that you love them. These are the people that God has sent you to so that you can become an agent of love an agent of forgiveness, an agent of blessing. And God can only work through you when you realize that you were once an enemy of God before he forgave you. When you have that compassionate heart in you, you'll be tolerant and patient towards those around you. You'll become a channel of God's love. When you see other people on, your knee, on their knees, you'll help them. That's what the Bible says in Galatians 6. Help people gently, restore them gently if they've sinned, if they've missed the mark, because you know what it feels like. Remember, Apostle Paul knew what it felt like to feel like giving up. If you look at that book of 2 Timothy, he said that it was God who enabled him. He even described himself as the worst of sinners. Yet God enabled him. If God enabled him, he can enable you. Are you on your knees before God? Stay there. It's the best. <laughs>